All right, welcome back. Let's continue learning a bit about loops so you can be powerful loop coders. What we're going to do is this time is uh, we're just going to build on the ideas. Now that you know your basic loop structure, we're going to go back to the master object here. I'm going to add a key event for key press letter B. And what we're going to show you this time is is we're going to use loops for a little bit more than just saying hi five times or ten times. We're going to start to use the loop counter a little more. So these examples will still be um, hopefully not too boring. They'll start to do stuff, and hopefully you'll get to see how these loops can be used. First example I'm going to show you here is I'm just going to use a for loop. I'm going to go OK, 1. I'll go OK less than or equal to 5. K equals K plus 1. And I'm going to do a show message string of K. Now, you can probably guess what this one's going to do. This one here is actually going to take our loop counter, K, which is changing, right? It's going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it's going to print a K out. So I'm actually utilizing this variable here that I'm using as my counter. I'm going to start using it in my block of code. So just to see this run here, let's give it a run. Hit the B key. One, two, three, four, five. You actually get to see that counter changing, right? So that's not too bad. Now let's uh, step this up a little bit here. I'm going to change this around a little bit. I'm going to take my loop. I'm going to start my K at zero. I'm going to say keep going up to 90. And I'm going to say, let's go up by 10 every time, right? So this should go 0 to 90 in steps of 10. But instead of showing a message this time, I'm going to make some coins. So uh, I'm just going to do something like this. CC is instance create, x comma y. Let's make a coin. Let's give this coin a speed. And here's the kicker here. Let's give the coin a direction of k. <clears throat> So you see here when I've chosen K, the first time this runs, K will be zero. And the first coin I make will be direction zero. Then the next coin I make, K will be 10. And the direction is going to be set to 10. And then the next coin, 20, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, all the way up to 90, right? So what we get is we almost get this burst effect. So let's give this little run and see what happens. <clears throat> Hit the B key here. Now I've done it on my master object, which is up there. But you can see, very quick, easy way to have a burst effect. And using the knowledge that I can use uh, my loop counter, you know, you can do a task before that you might have coded 9 or 10 lines. Now you can do it really quick. I mean, you can imagine doing this. Let's set it to 350. And let's just go to the room here and pick up the master and put it in the middle. And you can see here really quickly with just those couple lines of code, I can do the burst effects, right? Very fast and easy. Okay, this is where loops start to get fun. All right, let's take a look at another good one we can put here. I'm going to do the uh, player object this time. I'm going to go to the player object quickly. And let's add an event here for key press letter. I'll do uh, M for move. Hey, what happened there? M for move, and here's the code I'm going to do. I'm going to do a little thing here. You can see our players in the room. Let's just get rid of that. Our players in the room here, and you see there's a rock way to the right here. I'm just going to show you a little while loop that basically makes the player continuously move until it hits the rock. Now, this is going to show you something neat about the loop, because remember when you're in a while loop, that code keeps going and going and going, until it finishes, right? Until the condition turns false. So watch this little loop I'm going to do with the player. When I hit the M key, I'm going to say this. While place meeting. Now remember what place meeting does. Place meeting checks to see if the instance using the code, which is the player, is meeting another instance at the location I say. So I'm going to say if one pixel to the right, so my X position plus one, I'll keep the Y the same, so same height. If it's meeting a rock is false at that position, 
Okay, so that's my condition this time. No counter involved here. It's just some condition I'm naming. If one pixel to the right of me, there is no rock, right? It equals false. Then do the following. X equals X plus 1. Now that's the variable, right? That controls the X position of the player. So the player is going to move one pixel to the right. Then I come back up and repeat. And if one pixel to the right is rock free, I move one pixel to the right again. Now you can imagine what happens here. This loop keeps going and going and going until at that place I actually meet a rock and it ends up being true. And so what I should see here is when I hit the key, this loop will keep going as long as it has to go until the X position of the player is basically right beside a rock. Now this doesn't happen over a couple of steps. This happens when I hit the key. That loop just keeps running and running and running. That's an important part of these loops, right? You are trapped in this code. Nothing else happens in the program until this loop finishes. So let's give it a go. So that was the M key. If it works, I should just see the player jump right to the rock. One, two, three. Bam. So one more pixel over, I would be touching a rock. Right? So this kind of code, just to introduce you to it now, is very typically seen in a lot of platform gamers where you got to move stuff to stuff uh, before you check if a player can move or climb a ladder or hit their head on a ceiling. You do a lot of these kind of checks with loops right to put them right up against the edge okay so it's a nice little loop there it also shows you you don't always need a counter in the while loop okay okay let's take a look at number uh, four loop now uh, to show you the loop counter stuff uh, let's go to the master object I'm gonna go into master create and I'm just gonna pretend that the game is keeping track of a global variable here we'll call it global dot lives let's say the player has six lives so global.lives is 6. You know what? I don't think it likes the word lives. Let's call this global.hearts is 6. Now what I'm going to do is a very common game routine is I'm going to draw the number of lives the player has in sprite form. So I'm going to draw 6 hearts because they have 6 lives. Now before knowing how to do loops, you would probably have to write you know, a good chunk of code to check how many and draw the right number of hearts. Watch how easy this is going to be using loops. So what I'm going to do with the master, I'm going to go to the draw event. And in the draw event, let's set up a nice loop that will draw the appropriate number of hearts. Now for these number of hearts, I'll do this. So I'll say 4. Uh, let's say count is 1. Count has to be less than or equal to global dot hearts c equals c plus one now what am i going to do here i want to draw a sprite and the sprite i already have set up is sprite heart now it's asked me for the sub image negative one and now it wants to know what x and y position to do it at well let's just do this for a start let's put it at 100 100 and see what happens now you can probably already predict what's going to happen here. Let's see the effect. And I have one heart drawn there, but really what's happening is I really have six hearts drawn there. This loop has gone six times, right? Because global hearts is six. But the problem is I'm drawing it at the same XY position every time. Okay, and that's why we're just seeing it show up as one sprite. What I need here is I need some way to make it draw, you know, side by side. Now, some of you might say, well, why don't you change the X? Well, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to change the X position here so that it keeps moving over sideways every time. And here's the trick. So I'm going to say variable X position is 100. I'm going to start my loop. And I'm going to put X position in there. So the very first time this loop runs, X position is 100. So it'll draw it out at 100, 100. And then right after this, I'll say X position plus equals 50. So it increases by 50. The loop goes back again. It draws it at X position. But X position is now going to be 150. Then the next loop adds 50. 
exposition will be 200, 250, 300, etc., etc. Let's see how this works, and hopefully it uh, works as expected, and we have our six hearts in a row. Okay, so they're a little far apart, but the basic idea works, right? So if it's a little too far apart, you could always change that, right? Change it to 25. See how this looks. Beautiful. And so this is a very common routine. Now, if you had code that changed the number of lives, so hearts went down to five, obviously the loop will only draw five, four, three, two, one. So it ends up looking pretty good. Okay, so that's another good loop for drawing stuff out. All right, let's take a look at another example. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the player to teleport, but of course I don't want them teleporting on top of a rock. I want them uh, teleporting in some space that does not have a rock in it. This is very popular code uh, A for teleporting. Another good example is when you want to spawn objects, but you don't want objects to spawn into the walls in your map. So you have to make sure they find a free spot. So here's a good little loop that will help you do that. So let's go to the player, and let's just add a little code for key press T for teleport. Do, do, do. And when they hit teleport, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find a random position in the room. So I'm going to call this, oh, bad typing today, XXX and YYY. My room is 500 by 500. Now what I'm going to ask is, I'm going to ask if at this spot that I was placed, would I be hitting anything? So while, if I was placed, would I be meeting a rock? So if it's true I would be meeting a rock, what do I have to do? I have to find a new set of coordinates. So I'm just going to copy paste this in again. And there you go. So you look what happens there. It picks a set of coordinates. Let's say that that set of coordinates does have a rock. While well, place meeting at XY's rock is true, and it is true, I have to pick another set of coordinates, and it comes back up. Let's say those coordinates are touching a rock. Place meeting a rock is true again. Yeah, it does the loop again. Picks another set of coordinates. Let's say those are good. Place me in a rock is true. No, it's not. It's false. Don't do the code. And continue on. And maybe a little show message. Boom. Right? I've teleported. Now, let's see if this works. Here, ready for the big T? Boom. Whoa, my guy's not moving. I forgot something really crucial there. And the crucial thing I forgot was I never actually moved the player. X equals that value, triple X, and Y equals the value, triple Y. That's the actual moving the player, right? Saying X equals this new value and Y equals that new value. And there you go. Now we should see some actual action here. And you'll notice I'm never going to land on a rock, which is good, no matter how many times I do it. So it's a good little spawning code. Okay, common one a lot of students ask about. Now, just a little side point here. Let's say you don't want them to hit anything. You can actually say all. That'll consider all objects, right? But that's uh, maybe for another day. Anyways. That's that little loop. All right, let's try to finish this off with one last example here that just shows you something a, a little bit trickier, what you can do with your loops. What I'm going to do here in the player is I'm going to get the player to do the uh, key press letter, and let's do the letter N for number. I'm going to try to get them to pick the number, uh, lucky number 7, but I'm going to throw a little twist in this. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say... Let's start num out at zero. Whoops. And let's do a little loop here that gets the uh, computer to 
pick a number. So while the num is not the number 7, do the following. Num is i random range 1 to 1,000. Now let's do 1 to 100. Now what are the odds of picking a 7 here? Not very high, right? And so when this takes place, you're going to see this, obviously. It's going to not be 7. It'll pick a number. Probably won't be a 7. It'll come back up, pick a number. Probably won't be a 7. It'll come back up, and it'll keep going and going and going. Now, this will eventually pick a 7. Let's count how many times. So let's do a little counter here. Count to 0. And every time it picks, let's do count plus 1. And let's just do a little show message here. And let's just see how many times it actually takes to pick the number 7 and get out of that loop. Okay, so let's give this a little run, and that was the letter N key. Then we're going to throw a little twist in here. So I hit N, 184, 101 times, 40 times, 226 times, right? So it is working. But let's say that this was part of my game here. And I, I want it to pick some numbers or some values, but I don't want it to waste too much time. And if it can't find the value fast enough, get out of here. There's something you can do here, and there's two things we're going to show you, is I can actually get out of any loop, a while loop, a do loop, or a for loop. You can use the break statement. So I can say this. I can say if count, let's say it's more than 100 times, I'm going to say break. And break breaks me out of the loop and gets down here, right? So by doing this, I'm always going to be showing a message. And the nice thing is, is probably if I go over 100, which is 101, it's going to show message 101. Probably, right? If I break out, it's always going to show the 101. So if I give this a little go here, you're going to see every time I hit the N, 101, 83. So that time it didn't have to break. 101. So you'll see here a lot of 101s every time it needed to pick more than 100 numbers to find it. Right? You get the 101s. Okay, so that's the break statement. You can use this in the for loop or the do unto loop as well. Okay, and it breaks you right out of the loop. Now, the other thing I could have done, instead of using this break statement, because some people think the break statement's a little cheap. I don't know why, because, hey, it works, and they invented the command. But some people say, no, make your condition better up here. So you can actually do this. You can say while the number is 7 and count is less than or equal to 100. So this is a double condition in the loop. So far, we've only had single conditions. Just want to show you, you can do exactly what you do in your if statements and make these conditions as uh, long as you want. So if the number is not 7 and my count is still under or equal to 100, go for it. If not, you know, the loop stops and it ends. And this does the exact same thing basically as the break. I've just put it inside the condition instead. So you'll see we're getting the same results there. So it works nicely. So that gives you a little bit more of an idea what you can do with loops. Uh, there's nothing really you memorize with dealing with loops. You just uh, put together your logic, the loops, and go for it. Now we have another worksheet for you that has problems that are a little trickier to read. You want to go through those for sure, and then it asks you to code a few as well. So go for it, have fun with the worksheet, and then the real good stuff starts now that you have the basics in the next lesson where we'll start doing some uh, neat stuff with the loops. Thanks for watching.